In this video, we are going to discuss about photorespiration process. A photorespiration is a plant metabolism process where there is oxygenation of ribulose bisphosphate by Rubisco enzyme. And in that scenario, Rubisco enzyme fixes oxygen instead of carbon dioxide. And we also can say this photorespiration is the light dependent evolution of carbon dioxide. Since this process needs light to go on, that's why it's termed as photorespiration. Now getting to the Rubisco enzyme first. This enzyme is the most abundant enzyme on earth and it is the bifunctional enzyme. If we see the expanded name of Rubisco enzyme, it comes to be ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase slash oxygenase enzyme. So we see here it has got two types of enzymatic activities. One is carboxylase activity and the other one is oxygenase activity. When substrates are RUBP and CO2, that time it shows carboxylase activity. And when substrates are RUBP and oxygen, then that time it shows oxygenase activity. Let's see these reactions first. These reactions occur in chloroplast stroma. When RUBP and CO2 are the substrates that are present in stroma, that time this Rubisco enzyme will act as a carboxylase enzyme. That means its carboxylase site will be active. And this way CO2 is fixed and in this reaction we get the two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. And then this 3-PGA will enter into Calvin cycle and eventually glucose is produced. In the same way when there is RUBP and oxygen as substrates for Rubisco enzyme, it will show the oxygenase activity. And from this reaction we get two different molecules. One is 3-PGA that's phosphoglycerate and the other one is phosphoglycolate. The 3-PGA will enter into Calvin cycle, but the phosphoglycolate cannot enter into Calvin cycle as such. So a different plant metabolism will occur from here, which will convert phosphoglycolate back into 3-PGA so that it enters into Calvin cycle. And this conversion process of phosphoglycolate to 3-phosphoglycerate is called photorespiration, where carbon dioxide and ammonia is produced. And also ATPs are consumed in this process. And it must be noted that the photorespiration reactions occurs in three organelles, chloroplast, peroxisomes, and mitochondria. Now we see photorespiration decreases photosynthetic coefficient as PQ equals O2 evolved upon CO2 assimilated. And also it consumes ATPs rather than production. It was believed that it is a waste process, but now it has been observed that it is involved in plant defensive mechanisms through the generation of reactive oxygen species and peroxides in peroxisomes linked to photorespiration. Moreover, this photorespiration is only turned on when there is high temperature, high O2 concentration and drought-like conditions. Now let's discuss in detail the reactions of photorespiration occurring in chloroplast, peroxisomes, mitochondria. The chloroplast and mitochondria are double membrane structures, while as peroxisome is single membrane. Before getting into the photorespiration part, we know the C3 cycle runs here in the chloroplast, where RUBP is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate when Rubisco enzyme fixes the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And then the cycle continues back to RUBP again, and in that process, the glucose is produced. But under some circumstances, the Rubisco enzyme fixes oxygen instead of carbon dioxide, which then leads to photorespiration. Where RUBP and O2 are the substrates, and these substrates are converted into 2-phosphoglycolate. Then 2-phosphoglycolate is acted upon by an enzyme, phosphoglycolate phosphatase enzyme, and it converts it into glycolate. And here water is incorporated into reaction and phosphate is released. Now to convert this glycolate molecule, we need glycolate oxidase enzyme, which is absent in chloroplast, but is present in peroxisome. So glycolate needs to get transported into peroxisome from here. And this transport is mediated through an inner membrane channel protein called glycerate glycolate translocator. Now glycolate in peroxisome is oxidized by glycolate oxidase enzyme in presence of oxygen which yields glyoxalate and also there is production of hydrogen peroxide which later on is converted into water and oxygen by catalase enzyme. Now this glyoxalate receives amino group from GSGOG80 cycle that's glutamine synthetase cycle which assimilates NH3 in plants. 
so after that glyoxalate and amino group is acted upon by glutamate glyoxalate amino transferase enzyme and this produces an amino acid called glycine now from here glycine is translocated into mitochondria through amino acid translocator of inner mitochondrial membrane where this glycine is decarboxylated by glycine decarboxylase enzyme into serine and in that process NADH plus is reduced to NADH2 the CO2 is evolved and also NH3 is released. Now serine is translocated back to peroxisome where serine is converted into hydroxypyruvate by the action of serine glyoxylate aminotransferase. And then this hydroxypyruvate is converted into glycerate with the oxidation of NADH2 to NAD plus by the enzyme hydroxypyruvate reductase. And finally, the glycerate producer is translocated back to chloroplast, where it is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate again by the action of glycerate kinase. And this conversion consumes ATP molecule. So, eventually, the phosphoglycolate produced first in the process of photorespiration is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate so that it's made available for Calvin cycle. So, this is how the photorespiration reactions drive in the cellular organelles. Now to avoid the photorespiration process, some plants have adapted a mechanism called C4 metabolism, where Rubisco enzyme does not interact with oxygen at all. So that way only carbon dioxide interacts with Rubisco enzyme, which normally leads to Calvin cycle. This C4 metabolism will be discussed in another part of the video. So this is all about photorespiration in plants. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.